Hey guys, today we're going to talk about a serious issue. We're having problems with the reserve list that has been brought on by Standard. Let's take a look at this. It's coming up next. Hey guys, welcome back. MTG Moxman here. Okay. If you're new to the channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button, join in the fun. We have a little conversation today that I thought people just had to know about. I was doing some reviews of some cards last night after I finished last night's video, and it came to my attention. There's been some major sales in the reserve list. Um, I took a look a little further in. I thought I would give you guys some insight into what's been going on behind the scenes on places like eBay. So what we have happening is a massive spike in a lot of reserve list cards that are used in Commander. Now, since Standard is having such a hard time lately getting where it's going, they're, they're reprinting cards, people are losing faith in that ability of Wizards to carry on a good product, not overly reprint cards, to add value to collectors and investors on the back end. Now, Wizards unofficially doesn't care about um, investors, but really, we all know they do because they follow the secondary market, i.e. secret layers. Now, I don't know how to really delve in the sense of, of everything that went on. I'm going to pick on a few key cards today that are used in Commander that are really spiking up, okay? And I'll mention some other ones when I did a review to tell you that there's been some major sales in it forcing prices up higher. Now, the first card I want to talk about today, uh, and again, this is just cards I've noticed. I didn't go through every card possible because the list is huge, and I didn't want to go that far back onto eBay. Uh, to look at their past sales. But if you look back here, you're going to see sales in November and stuff on the great old copy artifact. An amazing card. It is reserve list. It is used all the time. Now, the sales back then, you're looking at like 30 35 bucks. Now, fair price. It is reserve list card. Now, supposedly, there's massive amounts of stock. This, this set was printed in oblivion. You'll hear it on their channels. And, and in some ways, they're right. For the time, it was printed into oblivion. But the magic market was much smaller back then. It's not as great as people think. When you look forward now, 25 years later, how many millions of players of magic there are compared to the hundreds of thousands of back then? Let's be honest, there's not as much as you think. And there's a lot of people starting to hone in on these cards and pick them up before they get too pricey. But if you go ahead and look at the prices nowadays in the last month or so, you can see it's jumped 33 to 40%. Okay, that's a massive jump for just a couple of months. People are starting to pick these cards up. They're being picked off because they're a cheaper card to buy. And if it's a cheaper card to buy now, when me, more people want to play Commander, that's going to be an issue for Commander players who want to get these cards later. I'm letting you know now because I noticed it. If I had to look back a few weeks ago, I probably could have saved some people some money who watch my channel, and I apologize for that. Lots go on in life and you miss things. But it caught my eye. Uh, when I was doing a review of a few cards on my list last night from my binder, stuff I collect. Um, I'm not going to put the whole thing up on the screen, but like I have I have these cards on my list, right, of stuff that I look at. And, and you look at it and you go, hey, some of these cards really went up. Okay, now the big one I want to talk about, and it kind of freaks me out, is Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune has been jumping hand over fist. Let me go to the first ones here. Hold on. So these ones I'm going to show you on the screen right now, these are damaged cards. Look at the corners missing. It went for like 90 bucks, 74 plus shipping. So let's just forget shipping in this case. Let's just say it went for $74 for a clipped corner. It's missing the corner. People still wanted to buy it. Damaged or not, they can put it in the sleeve and call it a day, right? <sighs> Guys, it's a commander staple. It's an iconic card. Look at the value of this thing. Now, when you go to future sales now, you're looking at 150, 180. I couldn't find any today at that price listing. Everything started around the $300. All my local places are sold out and it says 350. So I don't know if it's one or two people buying these cards up. Some of the sale listings ended in the same number so I could kind of track it back a bit. Some people are buying multiple copies, but I didn't see any one person sourcing all these cards out. So if that's not the case, and here's another image of ones more recently, so you can see the price just keeps jumping up. This one again has seen a 20-25% increase in the last, you know, two months. When you see a car jump up that much in the next two months, and you've seen cars like Copy Artifact, the ones I didn't put on the screen are going to be Fork, okay? Fork, again, is still kind of cheap. It is reserveless. There's other copycat spells like Twin Cast that are out there, but 
Fork is an iconic card done by Amy Weber. The art is breathtaking. It's in that 20 to 30 to 40, 50 dollar range. I saw some PSA 9.5s on eBay for 250, uh, but they had import fees and stuff. So in Canada, it'd be ridiculous. They'd be like 350 bucks a card. So people in the US could pick those up for probably what, 180, 185, but they are 9.5 BGS. They're amazingly high rated cards if you wanted to get one for your collection. Now, if you're looking to use cards, you can still get them for 20, 30 bucks for a heavily played one, but expect Fork to climb as well. The other card is Brain Geyser. Those Brain Geysers inside my binder were $5 each, $4.99 when I bought them last year. They're now going for 20 to $30. So that is a 75% increase over the course of 12 months. Of course, it's going to keep creeping up. It's 2x and you get to draw an amount of cards. In a commander deck, in certain vintage formats, legacy, it's a killer combo card. And it's well liked by a lot of players. And it's not going to be reprinted ever again. Yes, there's a lot of stock out there of these particular cards, but not as much as you think. Okay, I'm not trying to push some panic red alert siren button like on my, on my thumbnail for this video. But I do want to let people know, if you were looking at these cards in the future, buy it now. Get it out of the way. Put some of your modern cards on hold. And the reason this is happening, guys, is in modern right now, we just don't have faith in what Wizards is doing. It's not that the cards aren't good and the products aren't awesome. They are really good, but they put out so much. We're having wallet fatigue on the spending side of it. I myself have cut back. Many of the people on my channel have cut back. I've got emails asking about this stuff. It is slowing down in how we feel about modern right now. It's, it's a crazy format that's just been slaughtered. Cards are getting banned left, right, and center. Card quality is low, and people are just having issues with it. We're not happy. Wizards will fix it eventually. They tend to do these things in very long periods of time, so I do have some faith in that. But the fact that Wizards has been reprinting so many things in these special sets, trying to keep the revenue up, has killed investor confidence on the back end. So investors are dumping some of the newer cards they're not sure of to buy older cards, which are like like any investment, it's a safer where, you know, safer place to put your money because when you put it into an older card, it's always going to have a certain value because it's a reserve list and it's old. One, two, right? Whereas newer cards, if you're not sure it's going to be reprinted, you're, you're going to be worried about it being reprinted in the next one, two, three years if the value is pushing higher. Like, hey, Ileana's going too high. They're going to reprint it. It'll dash it down by 23%. I might as well ditch out on that card now until the reprint happens. And then they go into a reserve list, which is like a safe card. And it, you notice it's not people going for like Moxes and Power 9 cards. Those are always kind of high. They've kind of hit ceilings in some areas. and They're kind of hovering around that thing. It'll take another couple of years, I think, for those really to kind of bump up. Um, but the lower cards, the fast bonds, cards that people always use but don't think much of. Because, oh, they're 5 bucks or 6 bucks. My fast bonds I got for $2.50. $2.50. They're like 20, 30 bucks now. That's a crazy increase over the course of this 12, 13 month period. And I haven't been paying attention to them because I haven't been buying any of them. They're not on my buy thing right now. They were just a list to watch. When I went to do my check today because I had time, I'm like, whoa, what's been going on? And it was a perfect opportunity to make a video for you guys to let you know how scary it's going to be. If you want to get these cards, I would not wait 12 months to buy them because I don't know what's going to happen. Okay, if you have the money, especially a card like like Wheel of Fortune, which is already like pushing 250, 300 bucks Canadian, I would get it now and get it out of the way. If it's a card you want, try to find a beat up version. If you just want to play copy, find a beat up version. Like my my copy in here is beat to beat to tar. I think I have it here somewhere. Um, but that stuff is is nuts, guys. When you see it like that, see my Wheel of Fortune, this thing is beat. Okay, it's just one of my extra ones. And I think I bought this one for like $27 last year. Um, but look at that now, 27 to 250 And that's for beat up copies. And some really hacked up ones went for 75 80 bucks. It's missing a corner. You saw the image. Nuts, guys. So please pass this video around. Let people know. Again, if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for tuning in. It's kind of crazy to think about, guys, that some of these cards are hitting it. But it's not just, when I mean, you think of reserve list stuff, most people think revised. They think dual lands. They think, hey, it's a cool thing. And, and that's true. It always will be. Right? That's how people kind of gauge the health of the market is how they say. Um, but these old cards that people aren't really talking about are pushing higher. Even Legends cards I've noticed, certain ones are like pushing up an extra couple of bucks. Uh, nothing scary yet, but there's certain Legends cards you want. Um, I would buy them now. Things like Eye of Chaos, uh, Storm World, stuff like that are actually starting to creep up. So keep an eye on it. Um, amazing cards out there. And we do see people leaving that standard format 
into safer formats. They at least they consider safer, like like um, uh, Commander and stuff like that, because Commander is a much larger growing format. Wizards is taking an interest in it, but we can use a lot of our older cards in that format for fun, right? So you're going to see a lot of things going there, and people are putting their money there right now, which is causing a lot of these prices to surge up, and it's all because standard sucks right now. So it is what it is. Thanks a lot for tuning in. This is MTG Mox, man. I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great one today. Thanks again to all my patrons out there for making this possible. You guys are amazing. Have a great one today, guys. Enjoy the day. Be safe and pick up those reserve list cards while you still find them affordable.